the Lord one more time. I'm just here to give God thanks for bringing us to church safely and sound. And we just want to say thank you, Lord, for taking care of us all week long, Lord Jesus. A lot of things have been happening all week long, but yet and still, he brought us here safely. And we just want to give him praise. Just being God for just looking over us all week long, Lord Jesus. We, we would, uh, some of us didn't get a chance to make it through the week. And our uh, God would bless us enough to let us be here today. And we just want to give him thanks and praise and tell him we love him and we glorify his name. And we just want him to continue to look over us. If we have any friends here today, we just want you to join in with us today. And hopefully you'll get something out of this word today that the minister would bring uh, bring to us today that you can go out there and share with us. Because we need prayer now, Lord Jesus. Yeah. We lost one of our best players, yeah. Kobe Bryant, and his, uh, one of his daughters, and the seven members that was with him, Lord Jesus. But we know God taking care of them. We know that they're in a good place. I know they're feeling something real, real deep because he was amazing. He did a lot for for California and all over the United States. And we just want to give his family and the rest of the family that was with him praise and, and pray for him and, and help him through the situation that they're going through, the trial that they're going through. And we are so glad that God just blessed us today. He kept us and he, and he just he just keep on keeping us. Even though we don't sometimes we don't get on our knees, he's still there for us. And that's why we just have to give him praise. And let him know, you know, we thank you, Lord. We're gonna do better, Lord Jesus. Just help us, show us the way because we want to be a good Christian for you. We want to go out and minister for you, Lord Jesus. And we just want you in our life. We need you in our life, Lord Jesus. Because you've been so good to us. And I say all this in your precious name, Jesus.
sat there and I looked and I said, 805, 807, 809, 18, 811. I said, okay, now, uh, what I don't want to do, but I will, I'll start coming out and start at myself. Amen, amen. We want to be punctual. We want to respect the house of God. I want to respect your time. Yes. Uh, because God is an on-time God. Amen. area of excellence in order to be a five-star uh, church one of the things that's very important is consistency uh, last Monday I uh, was at a training session and uh, that was one of the uh, points of emphasis that you be on your post that we use or uh, a theme or a statement uh, early is on time Amen. on time is late and late is unacceptable uh, so uh, it's always amazing when people uh, have jobs they run and they dash and they yeah. supposed to be at work yeah. at 9 o'clock see them with a bunch of stuff they on running down the hall yeah. at, at uh, 858 and, and Lord help if they drop something along the way <laughs> so by the time they get to their seat or their desk it's already 9 o'clock or after yeah. and then uh, uh, the customers or whoever that you're doing work for is standing there looking at you waiting not now you right. violated their time right, right. and then you're out of breath and you say can I help you and and that person attitude jumps off and then yeah. before you know it everything has gone crazy yeah, but if you hadn't been on time waiting for them, yeah. when they got there they would have been a lot more receptive yeah. And you could have bought a lie like that song. Uh, a word of friend we have with Jesus that says, Oh, what needless pains we can bear. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of it is self inflicted because we're late. Yeah. And we're not on time. So let us let us remember um, to be at our post and be on time. Amen. Um, I don't know if anyone was really listening. Uh, last Sunday, uh, when I was making a statement and a message about how we should uh, love one another, and there's certain things that we need to put behind us, especially as it relates to our, uh, our families and friends and situations. Anybody remember me saying that last yeah. Sunday? I said that last Sunday around uh, at around eight fifty. Yep. Last Sunday morning. Amen. Yes, you did. Not knowing that less than an hour later, Kobe Bryant, Amen. his daughter, yes. and seven other people yes. will be yes. tragically yes. killed in a helicopter yes. crash. I'm sure that Vanessa Bryant, when they left that morning, hopefully they kissed each other and they said, I'll see you later and I love you. Yes, yes. Not knowing that that would be the last time. Mm. And it is said, you know, so much has been said, so many things were swirling around, but uh, it was said that uh, his daughter Gigi, Mm. When they found the remains were in his arms. Wow! Wow! So, wow! How? And I thought about it because I have four daughters, and I thought about in a situation like that, what could I possibly say? Oh, amen, amen, amen. Looking 
at an impending death wow. and something I don't have control over. Amen. 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 See, that's a lot of times we tend to forget there are things that you just don't have any control right. over. Amen. And it's important, church. It's imperative and important that our relationship with Christ is in such close breath that no matter where we are, we don't have to have any reservations about what's getting ready to happen. So the Bible said, the living know that they shall die. And the truth of the matter is, there's some folk not going to live to be a hundred. Amen. Amen. No, that baby and her friend were 13 years old. Yeah. There's no, there's no guarantee that you go get to no deathbed. I used to tell um, some of my friends on that, I invite them to come to church, and they say, "Oh, I'm gonna make my peace with God on my deathbed." Who mm. said you go get that? <laughs> they was in a helicopter. Mm. There are people that have died on the street. Yes. If you notice that, I mean, please, brothers and sisters, when you cross in the street, don't look both ways. Look every way possible. Yes. Because yes. You know, yes. I, 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 have, I have never seen so many people getting run over. Amen. Crossing the street. Keep going. And not only that, like I said, Sister Drummond, keep going. Yeah, Nobody stops. Yeah. Nobody's caring about human life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody concerned about the, whoever they hit and yeah, run over yeah. have families yeah, too. Yes, 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 Lord. And now they have to bear the blunt and the grief yes, yes. of somebody maliciously taking yes. their loved one's life and that person has no concern at all. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we have to be at this hour, mm -hmm. because it's, it's a real crazy spirit in the air. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You, 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 can't, you can't eat because you don't know what's in the food. That's right. That's right. Uh, the earth is three-fourths of water, but that's bad. Yeah, yeah. Airplanes are going over certain communities, dropping jet fuel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, doctors are crooked. Yes, yes. All they want to do is push pills and yeah. prescribe medication. And you don't get better, you get worse. Uh, uh, late night, looking at TV, uh, uh, after 10 o'clock is on, after the news is over, uh, it looks like it goes from one state of depression to the other. Because the news is depressing, and then coming up after that, they have a slew of commercials, and all of them are pushing pills. And then if you listen to them, they you go in for one thing and they said, but the side effects are. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, I take one pill and I'm out to have all this to deal with, to hand, 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 hand uh, Lord heal me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> By your stripes, we're healed. Yeah. I'm asking the Lord to heal me because all this side effects and everything, and then at the end of some of them say, and it could cause death. Yeah. Well, what am I taking the pill for? Wait a minute, I'm taking a pill for, for, for rheumatoid arthritis. Thank God I don't have it. And, but it said that I could have this side effect, this side effect. It could cause liver damage and it could cause death. Well, I, I, yeah. In pain, we must live because yeah. I've been trying to die. <laughs> Amen. You to listen, what's going on? I mean, it is a terrible time that we live in. And we must put our faith and our trust in God and in yes, Him Lord. alone. Amen. Amen. Uh, we want to pray for Sister Naya this morning. She had, uh, had to be rushed to urgent care. She's not feeling well. Um, so uh, let's keep her in prayer. Yes. Amen. 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 I sure should have heard an amen from the choir. <laughs> amen. Uh, keep her in prayer. So many 
others that are sick and afflicted, we want to keep them in prayer. If somebody here desires prayer, let's stand to your feet yes, and we'll pray with it for you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Nothing is to be ashamed of prayer. And you don't have to know what the prayer is for, but everybody and some time is going to need prayer. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, rather, I'd rather get prayed for now than have to be having a big, long prayer vigil for me. No, pray for me now. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That the Lord will prevent anything from happening yeah. and in causing my life to be endangered. Father, in Jesus' name, we do thank you for this day. This is the first Sunday of a new month. In this new decade, so much has happened. Hawkins sang the song, Thank You for all you've done for me because now tragedies have become a commonplace. All kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. Muggers and robbers, there's no. There seems to be no place to be saved, but you've been our protection every step of the way, and we want to say thank you. You woke us up this morning, bright new day. Thank you. Yep. Just through this week of sadness and tragedy, and we say thank you. And Lord, we recognize that Kobe Bryant was a gift. A unique gift. But we pray for the families that were on board. They may not have run up and down the court, shot a basketball, but they were just as important to their families. Just as significant to their families. They were superstars in their own families. So we pray for them right now. Ease the burden and the pain, Lord. Wipe away the tear-stained eyes. Let them know that you're their comfort and their strength in this time of sadness and sorrow. Lord, the world is grieving, but thank God those of us that know you and have our faith in you and our confidence in you. We don't grieve and we don't mourn as those that have no hope. But this one thing we do know, all things work together for the good. For them that love the Lord and those that are called according to his purpose. We pray and lift up Sister Naya right now, Lord, that you will strengthen her. Touch her in her body from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Move right now. Give her comfort. Even today, Lord, those of us that are standing, touch us in a special way. We all need your help. We all need your power. We all need your strength. Keep us, Lord, in your care. Watch over us. Keep us. Bless us. But most of all, encourage us. In the name of Jesus. The name that's above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that you are Lord to the glory of God the Father. We thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And every heart that believes it, put your hands together and give God a praise. I want you to do something real quick, real quick. Move out of your seat, get out of your comfort zone. Go and give somebody a hug and tell them everything's going to be all right. Come on, move, move, don't be ashamed. Amen, amen.
I'm going to give the Lord a glory and honor for all that he's done for us. so much for us that we should all be just glad about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be glad about it. Whatever he's done for you, you only know what God has done. He used to say, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. And the text said, I know, I know, I know what the Lord has done. Father, in Jesus' name, we do thank you again for the opportunity to declare the riches of the word, that the words of my mouth and meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Hide us behind the cross, forgive us of our sins, that they see more of me and less of me. In the name of Jesus, we pray that God just a little bit uh, uh, this month, the Black History Month, the Gospel according to St. Matthew, uh, chapter number 11. 11 gospel according to St. Matthew's chapter number 11 and verse number 12 we'll be reading for your hearing. Good to see you this morning, Bishop Darby. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise for our bishop here. Amen. Sister Darby, thank you so very much. In my Bible, it's in red, so that means Jesus is saying this. It ain't nobody else. It's Jesus saying that. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Kingdom of heaven suffers violence, yeah. and the violent take it by force. Yeah. Right. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. we need a movement, yeah. not a moment. Yeah. Amen. You may be sitting in the presence of the Lord. Right. Very quickly, expeditions, we've got to ease on down the road. Uh, while we have a few moments to share with you. It is imperative that we come to a real clear, concise, conscious awareness yeah. of the time of which we live. Yeah. We're living now in a time where people, uh, especially people of color, have become far too passive yeah. in our approach to anything. We are sitting back in a peculiar posture, mm -hmm. waiting for somebody to hand us something where Jesus declares here that the violent take it by force. Amen. We have become so comfortable, too comfortable, mm. in our walk even with Christ. We've become so comfortable that people come in to the sanctuary, if they come at all, right. with attitude. They come in with a feeling of they should be glad that I showed up. There is a time, in a time now where people do not regard coming to the house of the Lord as as important as it is to punch that clock on Monday morning. We're living in a time where people would rather go to lunch and brunch than to come to Bible study. And I'm almost through. We have we're in a time now where prayer has almost become obsolete yeah. in the church. Yeah, right. You could say we're having a concert, the church is packed out. Yeah. But you say we're having prayer service, it'll always be where two or three <laughs> are gathered together in his name. Yeah. Will he be in the midst? We are living in a real serious time where it's going to take us some real shown up neology yeah, yeah. getting on our knees praying and crying out to God because we're really become oblivious to what's on the horizon we're looking and living in a time now where we as a people of color have all but become especially black men extinct yeah, yeah. used to be a time when you would come and the front row would be littered with deacons there was a time when you could see 
on the other side of the church. Trustees, somebody that you could trust, would be there making sure that the work of the Lord would go on. But now, but now, but now, thank God. I thank God for you sisters. Thank God for the women in the church. We are in a debate now. It's not a debate for me, but for some in a debate about women preachers. And if women be allowed to preach. Well, I, I stopped by to tell you the first message from the resurrection came from a woman. There was a woman by the name of Mary Magdalene that went and told his supposed to be homeboys who was on the other side of town crying and weeping, wondering what is we going to do next? And we living in that same time, in that era, where thank God for the women that have been stepping up in Congress and stepping up in the Senate and stepping up in various areas of the legislature saying there is a need, there is a need, there is a need for somebody to tell the message that we ain't going to take this no more. Ah, yeah, there's always been somebody that's willing to step up to the front and say we are going to draw a line in the sand and we ain't going back no further. You don't believe what I'm saying? There was a woman by the name of Deborah and she's in the Bible and she was a warrior. She, she was a warrior and so happened that she had to get into an encounter with a, another warrior by the name of Barak. It's in your Bible. Barak had to come to Deborah to find out if he should even go to war. Uh -huh. Y'all better read your Bible. Barak had to ask the woman, is it necessary for us to go to war? And it was Deborah that said, not now, but we will wait until we get directions from God. Oh yeah, it is important. It's important right now, children, that we get some direction from God. We've been getting direction from everybody but God. We've been looking to our officials of the city and they have let us down. We have looked to Congress people and they have let us down. And we ain't even going to talk about who's residing at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. How he has let us down and has had the, a mitigated call to when he was running for president said, you might as well vote for me. What do you have to lose? Well, in three years, we've lost a whole lot. Oh, uh, we've lost a whole lot depending and saying, well, why not try? There are certain things I'm just not going to try. But if you tried everything and everything has failed, there's still one that has never failed. And his name is Jesus. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here today that knows that beyond a shadow of a doubt, no matter what has come and gone, Jesus never fails. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the question is, who's going to stand up? And who's willing to be counted amongst them that would declare the word? It was a man by the name of John. And I, I thank God for John. John was a real revolutionary. He wasn't worried about being in Cosmopolitan Esquire or GQ. He was a real revolutionary. Standing out in the, in the wilderness crying aloud saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John didn't even have clothes like you and I. He didn't go down and get nothing tailor made. It was made out of camel and goat skin. He didn't have even no Stacy Adams. He wasn't worried about putting on the latest shoe fashion. He wasn't worried about wearing his gaiters. He had on no feet sandals. The kind of sandals that all you see are his toes hanging out. But he was crying loud and sparing nothing. And Jesus picked up the pen and said that from the days of John, there have been nobody greater than him because the kingdom of heaven survives and divine and taken by force. There's some stuff, brothers and sisters, that we're going to have 
have to take. We ain't gonna have the ability nor the time to wait on somebody to bring it to you. It's just like a man sitting at home talking about what he want to do, but he ain't getting the book out of his seat of don't do the do 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 nothingness. Do 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 nothingness. Do 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 nothing about it. Waiting on a job. That job go show up at his front door and knock and say, Hello, sir. My name is John and I came to get you. The job is right out in his handprints, but he won't get up out of his stool of do 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 nothing to go and get it. And that's the way it is with us. We're sitting back waiting on somebody to give us something and we all sit down on our seats do, 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 do nothing talking about the Lord go do this and the Lord go do that when I stop by to tell you this morning that the Lord is only going to move when you start moving when you get up off of your knees then it's time to climb up on the wall it's time for somebody to start building. I need somebody while I'm on my wall to hand me a hammer. Can I get somebody to give me some nails? Is there anybody that will come with some secrets so we can pour a foundation for the foundation is already laid? Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, uh, but there's some stuff uh, we don't have to take. Uh, we can sit back and wait. Uh, I know it says, uh, wait on the Lord uh, and be a good cheer, uh, and He will strengthen your heart. Uh, but after you get through waiting, uh, you got to get up and do something. Uh, we got to get up and move. Uh, look at your neighbor uh, and say, move, baby. Get out the way. If you ain't going somewhere, move out of my way. I'm tired of in the way, Christians. Somebody said, I've been in the way for 30 years. That's the problem. You in the way. I need somebody on the way. Not in my way, but on my way. Somebody, you grab somebody, you grab somebody, you grab somebody, but most of all, grab everybody, a dying savior, somebody that's able to lift you up, somebody that's able to pick you up, turn you around, place your feet up. Sometimes 
for trial. That's Because he's both judge, prosecutor, and jury. See, you don't know who you are when you understand that you are a king's kid. And you tell your daddy, they messing with me. A friend of mine, we used to be careful how we'd ask his mama, Pray. You had to be specific. No, this is serious. You had to be specific. Really specific. Because when she went down to pray, some things happened. So he went and told his mom about a situation that happened. She went down and prayed. And that person that was bothering them dropped dead. So he said, Mama, I didn't tell you to, 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 to kill him. She said, well, you ought to be more specific in your prayer. Then. I didn't tell the Lord to kill him either. I just told the Lord, whatever you have to do, do it. And that's what the Lord did. He had to do it. He killed him. See, we Christian, we don't think God killed for us. Yes, Be careful. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it, was, it was in a convention. People didn't want this certain person to be elevated. Amen. The preacher, see, God don't have no distinction on who died. Amen. The preacher was so mad at another person being elevated. The preacher, you hear what I said? I didn't say that. The captain of the deacon, I said, the preacher Amen. said, he'll be elevated over my dead body. Yeah. Yeah. In the convention. Yeah. Yeah. The man got elevated, the man had a dead body. Be wise. Yes. For 
we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. I tell you what, you sisters, y'all stay out of Macy's for any length of time. Y'all stay out of Nordstrom any length of time. Let me show you how they work. I used to work in retail. They have a listing of saying how you spend your money. Yeah. And when you don't show up at an appropriate time or for a while, all of a sudden, they got sales and coupons and tell you you can get 30 or 50 or 60 percent off. They ain't never gave me nothing to make yeah. <laughs> I don't shop there. I don't give me my money. And that's your choice. But they will check to see how your spending record is. And if they don't see you for a while, we miss you. No, you don't miss me. You miss my money. You don't, miss, you don't even know me. If I walk up in there, you don't, you don't only know me as a credit card number. How much did I spend? Yeah. We miss you. We love to see you again. Yeah, we got the 50% sale off just for you. Just for me and, and 5,000 other folks who sent that same letter out to. Amen. Because when we stop, we have to realize our power. When we stop, it hurts in a lot of economic ways. We gotta stop pushing ourselves down like we don't mean nothing. Oh yeah, we mean a whole lot. That's right, that's right. And the truth be told, again, when you look at the spending habits of an African American, if we collectively put our money together, yes. we'd be the tenth strongest nation in the world. Great and wonderful things, but we got to be 